everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we are going to be painting a face in black and white. We're going to be doing this more realistically. I'm going to be teaching you guys some new blending techniques or going over some blending techniques that you already know. The colors are simple. It's just black, white, and phthalo blue. Optionally, you can include some zinc white if you're wanting to up your blending game. That can be a good thing. And also Golden's Glazing Liquid for extending paint and slowing down the drying time. So that's what we've got going on. I'm going to show you how to get the image on a round canvas because today is a round canvas. This is our round canvas right here. And I'm going to give you guys a bunch of tips and tricks and things that I've come to uh, in round canvases. Now on the mic. Hello. Is a disembodied voice you will hear throughout the show. That is John. He Hello. is my husband and partner in the show. And he's going to do some very important things. He's going to make sure that you can see what I'm doing, because if you can see it, you can paint along with me. So even though I'm explaining it step by step, he's going to make sure you have the very best view possible into what I'm doing. The other thing that he's going to do is he will sometimes pick a question, pick a question from you guys and ask me live during the stream. So definitely ask questions. It's a good idea to put those all in caps so we can see them. Hmm. Now, we do have Super Chat enabled, and we really are grateful for all Super Chat things. Um, but it is not uh, how you get your, you don't have to do Super Chat to get your question answered. We hand, answer questions for our entire community. And uh, so don't worry about that. If you work. <laughs> it's coffee. It's clearly a need. Breathe in. Breathe out. Ah, there's so many folks over here saying hello today. Are they ready to do today's deal? Oh my gosh, you know what I forgot to give you? Mm. No. The picture in picture. That's okay. Um, let me ask you, are you are we are there wishes on today's canvas? Uh we have not put wishes on today's canvas because we were caught up on wishes yesterday. Well, we had one that was snuck in. Could you sneak one in there for us? I think I probably could. Happily do that. What is our wish? We're gonna um we're going to put a wish, a healing prayer in for Matt's 14-year-old daughter who is, she's on her way to recovery. So she's starting her recovery process and we're going to send lots of love and support to her. For speedy recovery. Yep. Oh, I like that. So glad we're starting with one. All right, there we go. That's a good one. Well, and, and, you know, there's, there's been a lot of just general request and love for people who are going through a lot of uh, the, the COVID stuff out there. There's, a, I mean, just from financial to personal, you know, financial stuff and medical, and it's just a lot. So, yeah. Love let's goes let's out just to all, all say we come out the other side of COVID okay. That'd so. be good. Okay. If all of us recover from COVID for whatever it has done to us. Now, it, Lady Around Morgan. Around the world. Oh, Lady Mor Morgan. I think it's Morgan. Okay. Morgan? What more gain? More Morgan? I'm not sure. See, the thing is, is the you, you throw in some valves in there, and, and I'm never really sure how we're getting those. Anyway, so lady was asking if I don't have a round canvas, can I do it square? I, you can, and um, I, the traceable setup that you could just do this on a square canvas. All that you would do is extend out the zones of black and white and make the focus of the painting in the center. So that's not a problem. I do have uh, this gridded reference if you wanted to grid. Oh, no, I don't have the grid. I have the uh, re just the reference image on the website uh, for you to download. And the traceable is also there. So you're not required to, to know this or have this. I'm wondering if one of the mods or you can grab I'm, the I'm working picture on it right in now. picture. I'm seeing if I can. Yeah, I posted I, it up a few places. You've got a couple places you could grab it. I'm well, really, I'm getting usually it off what our happens website. is before the show, I send John all this stuff, and then he's able to load it into the live streamer. But today, you apparently, know, I just didn't do that. What was totally awesome is you put it up on our website. So I just went out to our website. I went to the calendar. I went to today's date. There was the event. I clicked on it. Hey, look, there's a reference image. Ah, I'm, oh, perfect. I'm downloading it right now to my pictures file. So Shoop. John is able to do this. Now, on Saturdays, how this works is uh, Friday nights, we do an easier class. We did a nice little easy class here in black and white and a pop of color on Friday night. And then Saturdays, we come back and we visit uh, that concept again, but we do it with a more complicated image. Mm. So, you know, just wherever you are in that, uh, 
Over here, you can see our materials. We've got our Mars black, our titanium white, our phthalo blue, and our gloss glazing liquid. This is a really unique product on the market. There are not a lot of duplicate products in alternate brands. There are other things that do one part of this, like there are retire retarders and they slow down drying time of paint. And there are glazing mediums that speed up the drying time of paint, but allow you to glaze. This allows you to do both. Hmm. So it's a really unique product. Um, they carry it in a lot of places and online. Um, and that's what you want is the gloss glazing liquid. You do not want GAC 900. Hmm. <laughs> it's this right here. And that, that labeling is what you're looking for. Now here's the traceable and here's our round canvas. We've got our wish. The first thing I'm going to show you is how I manage my round canvases, which is this lazy Susan. And if you're like, wow, that's a really beautiful lazy Susan. Yes, it is. I got this at Walmart. This is part of the pioneer woman line. I am not an official advocate for the brand in any way in any way, but I do buy a lot of it. Hmm. I like to take uh, some type of tape. You can take washi tape or just regular masking tape. And I like to tape a couple spots on the back side of the canvas so that when I'm working, and I have to tell you, this is really a joy to do. When I'm working, it's really easy. Now, moderator Cad Red actually sent me these canvases uh, for a project we were doing in the patronage. Uh, well, actually, I had said I could do a project, and then she was like, I'm sending you canvases so you will do the project. <laughs> so we did, um, and she can tell you where she got them. They were really inexpensive. They're kind of like a particle board, so they're different than other stuff that you might use, like oh, yeah? a cardboard with a painting treatment, which answers your question, could I paint on cardboard? Yes, I think you could. All right, so I've taped those, and I'll put... This here, I've got my wish on the side. I know of the canvas is going to be black. And I will tape that down. That's pretty terrific. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. Now, normally, I will use serral paper, but I want to go back to the beginning for just a second. Those of you that have painted for me, with me for a while know that you can use serral paper and that the yellow and the white are my two favorite uh, colors from that. And it's serral, S-A-R-A-L. That is a water-based transfer paper. A little pricey though. So if you don't want to do that, I've got a woodless pencil and I'm going to make a rubbing everywhere I've got a line on my traceable. Just make a rubbing everywhere I've got a line. Now, I do recommend that you make rubbings uh, from a couple different directions so that you have a nice dispersion of your graphite. Can you say that with me? Let's disperse our graphite. Hmm. Disperse your graphites well, young ones. I also, another nice thing is you can hold your image up. You'll see my graphite rubbing here, but what I see is the areas of line I haven't covered yet. So as you're doing your rubbing, just periodically hold up your paper if you're having trouble seeing any of your lighter lines. On your printer, when you're printing these out, um, I oriented this on portrait and I put it on 65% printout to get it to fill my paper. Your printer might be different. I don't know. Just in case it is. Let's see, I've got that. I always like to look at that a couple times. You can kind of see this process. It's a, it's a bit fussy, but again, if you don't have access to serial paper or you don't, um, you can't get out and go shopping or you just are trying to save some money and you're like, look, I got a pencil. That's what you do. I'm not putting uh, the rubbing all over my traceable, and that's just because all I've really got to do is put the graphite where I have lines. That's the only place I've got to do it. I'm going to take this, and I will kind of center it on the canvas right here. Down a bit, because it's easy for me to extend my black and white zones up and down. And then the important thing will be to tape down your paper mm. so that as you are doing the tracing transfer, it doesn't shift on you. So you want a nice clean transfer. Huh. Isn't this wonderful? I have done this, a again, in patronage, I've done this, and I have to say I'm really fond of the round canvas Lazy Susan combo in painting. 
it allows me to sit, do some really fun projects, and just kind of relax through it. So I like that. What does everybody think of that, sir? Hmm. Let's see here. I was over here getting our little picture in picture loaded up. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you. I'm so sorry for that, babe. So I'm going to post a link in here for you guys if you're having trouble finding the location on the website, just in case. Just, oh, no, sure. yeah, definitely do that. I'm not sure if everyone caught the uh, location. The instructions on how to get there? Yeah, but I'll go ahead and just drop that in here in chat, just in case. That's always a good idea because sometimes, you know, when you're new to a web, like when you know a website, you can get through almost any crazy thing, right? But when you're new to it, it feels like everything is impossible to find. And we've really got to improve our user interface. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that right now. I found your picture in picture and I made it um, transparent. Oh, wonderful. <gasps> You're so good, Don. It really is quite good. All of the lines that I put on your traceable are to help you locate areas of value. You know, you may look at the reference and be like, oh, well, I need uh, something different, and that's okay. I'm just trying to help you guys figure out where your values are going to be. Mm. Ian. Hi, Ian. Really, he really good. I agree with him. We might want to add a flying rocket poking her in the eye, and then it's journey to the moon. <laughs> Although a modern, better looking version. <laughs> Why not, right? Why not? And again, um, and I'll upload my gridded image for you guys because you can uh, grid around Canvas. I was like, could it be done? And I was like, oh, yeah, it could. Leslie likes that you're doing this and sitting down because she always paints sitting down. So she's curious how you're handling that. You know, and I'd like to do some more sit down classes. Sometimes I wonder, uh, like, how invested uh, the viewer is in my standing at the easel. Like, is that relevant for your experience, learning the lesson? Or is that just a weird thing I do because it's a weird thing I do? See how this transfer has gone? Huh, looks like pretty well. So we have these lines here. Now I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm going to, this is from our watercolor sets that we have in our store. And these are aqua pencils that are graphite pencils that are watercolor pencils. And I'm going to improve some of the uh, lines and design that I have here see them a little bit better so that when I'm working, at least for some of the major objects, I'm not, not struggling in any way. I like these because they're very water soluble and they will just disappear right into the paint. Now, this line along the nose is going to be a big deal because it's really what demonstrates the uh, shape of that, that feature is the shadow line. So we're going to be attentive to that. See, you have to be careful, though, because sometimes those, those uh, light sources, they change on you. Because... What happens if she decided to stop looking right and look left? Well, that would definitely change that light source. It would. She would have to be weird. And I've got to kind of, you know, pay attention to this here. Because very little of her actual eye is showing. You know, like even this shadow, the, even this highlight is just a grade above what is normally going on. Like we'll not see much of this. I'm going to try to adjust that up a little bit. Let's see. I figured this would help just a bit too. Mm -hmm. Not just my enjoyment of doing this, but. Trying to pick up some of that detail there for you. Or volume. Just little bits of information that we have. I'm going to put out my paint. 
And uh, hopefully John can help you see the paint as I put it out. Oh, yeah, I can adjust. I've got it zoomed in here a little bit for them. Okay. So I'm going to put out some Mars black. Titanium white. I'm not going to put out the blue to the very, 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 very end. Simply because there's just almost no point to. Um, the blue is for just that pop of color in the eye. This is a brand new one. I must have treated myself to a brand new one, guys. <sighs> Peeling. You peel these and then they have the film. You get a poke and then you get gunk on your finger. Got gunk on the finger. Got a gunk. And there it is. The glazing <gasps> liquid. It's glaze. It's the glazing liquid, but it's not, again, no other company. All the other companies, when they say glazing medium, what they really, really mean is um, a transparent medium that's fast drying that you can do thin applications of transparent paint. I found all the fun buttons now. Did you find all the fun buttons? Make, make. The fun buttons are the fun buttons, sir. Make our, our. Reference image do funny now, things. I'm going to get a long handle brush, which is a little tough to paint um, sitting at a table, as many of you might know. Hmm. Is that when I initially, and I'm going to just kind of clean up my white, even though I have um, white on the canvas, I'm going to go ahead and take that extra step of painting in a little white. Now, the long handle brushes, those are, those are designed for standing up? Those are designed for standing. And they can be a little tricky when you're sitting and painting because they can poke you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in all seriousness, they totally can. So the short handles may be better for when you're sitting. Yeah. When I designed these, we were, you know, hadn't, I hadn't really thought about how many people were sitting and painting and that we might be better off to uh, do a short handle. We're looking at that right now, coming up with um, some short handled concepts and product. Um, what I can tell you is, uh, I don't personally mind if you cut the handles. <laughs> it does void the warranty of the brush. It does. It does. Oh, we Anytime had you some... make modifications to any art products like brushes and stuff, it tends to void the warranty. I think we had bubbles that I missed. Did me you, screw, do, you do we have virtual <laughs> bubbles or would you like me to blow some? Oh, I don't know. Do you have I have, bubbles? I have my bubbles over here. I well, have the manual break. table bubbles. When you're taking your break, I'll tell you all the bubble support we've got going I on. I think that's a good idea. So watch me paint white and canvas white. But there really is a different sheen to the paint. And also these uh, less expensive little round canvases really need it. They, they need it. Mm. Very badly. And then I'm going to come on the other side and start putting in the um, at least the minimal amount of the black. Now, that took so long. I'm going to go ahead and do a bigger brush at first. I just want to get more of this done. Hmm. Around these edges. I can always come back and get a, get a second, second coat, but just getting some of this in. Now, check into... Would like to know if you're okay if if you're sitting at an easel, what would you use? You should sit back from your easel, so you would still be using long handles for the most part. But I would have uh, some detail brushes that were shorter handled for moving in and doing detail work if you're leaning in. Aha! Uh -huh. Have a shocking amount of opinion on that. <laughs> Well, if you ask someone their opinion, they're likely to give it to you. So, especially me. <laughs> What's funny is that people will offer you their opinion without even asking. So, that happens all the time. This is true. I would say uh, people often do offer opinions without even being asked. You know what you would paint? You should paint Sherpa. What should I paint? I don't know, but we, I'm sure that someone will tell you. Oh, no. Okay, first of all. Please, yes, do give me suggestions for painting. He is just teasing. <laughs> Before you're like, oh, no, I suggested painting. We actually do like our community to we give us suggestions. It. I do this show for you guys, and it's important to me to know what you're interested in doing and making. 
Well, you definitely, ask. definitely do let me know it's, what you want to paint. So you ask, though. You generally do. A lot of folks in our community, they just have folks just walking up to them, just telling them, you know what you need to paint? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, yes. You know, like your next and, door and neighbor. And for them for free. Yeah. For them for free. Yeah. It's That's like, my very favorite. Can you, you need to paint something, and you need to do it for them and for free, and it's going to give you exposure. That's right. In their home. If you if you come over and paint my Chevy pickup truck, it's going to help you get exposed to all my friends in my office. I, and, 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 and I have to say, if you want to support an artist, definitely buy artwork. Definitely pay cash. And uh, exposure is when you post it on your social media and tell everybody that they're your favorite artist and that they should all run out and buy them. That's how you help them out that way. You don't have to do that for me. I'm just saying general artists everywhere. I'm just helping general artists everywhere. I'm okay. I got some exposure. But <laughs> if you were trying to help a local artist get out there and get known, he would be by their art, take pictures of it, gush to your friends, talk about how you really like the experience. And that does a lot to help an artist get out there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to continue painting into my black with my cat's tongue nut because I now need some detail work. And this is going to be interesting because uh, it, some of what I even have in here, the value on it is still so deep that it's almost it's almost better served to be black. I'm going to go ahead and actually paint that out because that's very dark. Always use your reference as your guide for what you're doing. It will tell you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Always. And this first work here that we do is about getting a certain amount of paint out. On a project like this that's a value study, you want to get a, your big value sets out and then start working all your crazy little subtle values. Mm -hmm. Now, this type of canvas um, often will need a couple coats of paint, no matter what paint you're using, just because of the nature of the coating and the particle board. Mm. Oh, and you can frame these. They do have round frames. I have seen those. Yeah. So there is a way to frame these. Um, there's some really good stretched versions of these that um, I think Fredericks has some and... Uh, Oh, gosh, I think Masterpiece might have some. So look around because you might find very good ones. I'll take a couple coats to get the deep, deep black that I'm going to want to have. And a lot of that eye is going to have to go away into the deep value. I'm just retaining enough so I know what I was doing before I started my painting in the big values. Mm. Because that will become detail work. You can kind of see what I mean there about watching those particular little lines. And expect to need to come back for a second coat. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So could you blow some bubbles? I could. I was actually at a breaking place where I was going to blow some bubbles and sip some coffee. Because we need to give some bubbles over here, and I believe it's for, let's see here. Oh, J uh, is it Janine? I think it's Janine Z. Oops. Janini. I need to blow them this way. They're making... I've been messing up names all day, but you know what? 
for Janine, I have this. Look, I have I have I have a bubble rocket. See, when you blow the bubbles, shh. All right. Oh. I think maybe you do the rocket because the bubbles are getting all over everything. <laughs> I'll see I'll see what I can do to find you some virtual bubbles. Yeah, but the rocket could be good. We could do rocket times Let's too. Let's do rockets. For right now. But we have we have to do the So cuz the bubbles did kind of What it is is they create a resist almost like an alcohol resist and they push the moisture back in the paint. Hmm. And that can um just if you want it to happen it's fantastic. If you weren't planning on it happening, it is a real problem. Mhm. Mm I'm going to come over here. I think I'll give my canvas a dry just because of that, because of the bubbles. And then, um, then I'm going to sip some coffee. Oh. So I'll let her do that while she's making that go. And I, it's pretty much the same thing. Don't use heat. Make sure you keep your um, uh, surface dry all the way with when you're, when you're, getting this because the with the if the paint is wet it'll drag into the next color it'll be kind of sticky so don't use any heat make sure it's thoroughly dry and you'll see the color change that or not the color but the reflection it'll get less shiny as it's uh, uh kind of going so yeah see if that'll work and Thank you guys for coming. Um, oh, oh, there she is. Here I am. Oop, I was. Oop. Here I am. Let's get into a number four round. I'm going to take a little bit of my black and white and make some grays. And I'm going to want to come to places. I'll start here down at the lip. And I'm going to start to play with the subtle transitions between shadow. And if you need to, get some glazing medium, and it will help you get those blends going. Wrong button. <laughs> that did not do what I thought it was going to do. Did it not? <laughs> no. I have a bunch of domed blenders mm -hmm. that I'm going to be using today where I need it, where if I need help anywhere on the blending. And that's if it, if it comes up. The glazing medium actually does quite a lot for me, but sometimes the dome blender is helpful as well. Mm. Because you want to get these nice, soft effects. I mean, with a darker line, and I'll wipe out and come back with a little blending medium. Subtle, weird little transitions will make a big impact on this. And this is essentially like doing um, almost a graphite hmm. uh, study, if you think about it. Is almost like that. You could do this in pencil very easily. This is a piece that would really lend itself to pencil work. It's interesting to see how it lends itself to artwork, painting work, mm -hmm. pencil versus artwork. I'm going to bring my deeper gray back into my black because it's real easy for me to come back and blend some black into that right there. Creating kind of a soft light transition. Because all the way up here, very soft, the skin. You can always come back with a little bit of white. Make sure that those transitions 
hard to find. I'm just doing a number four round. Hmm. Sometimes I find it's also helpful to kind of like stipple or like lightly diffuse the line along these types of transitional spaces. Nice little gray going here. I'm going to just do that. How is everybody doing with their black and white studies? Let's see. Well, I see. Going over there, they, they, you know, there was someone asking about some music next time. We've done a couple of these with music backgrounds, haven't we? Um, some, like some of our Zen music experiences. Yeah, we've done some Zen. You just watch us paint, and and uh, there was music in the background. Mm-hmm. Get our dome blender out. This is a Princeton number 12 round blender. And what it does is it lets you kind of get into spaces like this and soften your transition. If I come back with some white and I want to soften this, much easier to do. Wipe off on a paper towel. Mm. It's just blending there, and then you just come back with white. So. Isn't that interesting how it just spins around. I love these little dollies. It's a real nice way to have to work. So. Oh. You said so. Oh, I did. I was just, I figured some things out here. Patty sent Patty. us some lovely bubble support. And. Because, I think Patty deserves a rocket. Uh, you know what? Well, I, I have all sorts of cool toys to do. I can, I do can, you? Add, yeah. See, because I have undersea bubbles. So oh, well, that give work. us undersea bubbles. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. And somewhere we can. There it is. We can send the rocket to the moon. See. Off it goes. You can see we Thank take you, this deeper black value. And again, number 12 blender. It's a, you know, it's not a huge investment as a brush, and I do recommend getting one. Mm -hmm. What brush are you using there? This specifically is a number 12 Princeton Select round blender. Mm. And I'm going to zoom in on the blender. And I got there. mine at Michael's. So they can see a little bit more of the blending action that you've got going on in there. Oh, that we're that we're doing here. Yeah. You can see that it just softens and diffuses. Mm -hmm. Wonderful little tool. In these surfaces, I mean, this is a very inexpensive surface, so it's by no means ideal. Mm. By no means. And now you can see we have a nice little shadow transition at the forehead that we need. It can be hard to get. And so that's why I very much do enjoy... Um, using these types of tools because you can age yourself a great deal in your in your process mm -hmm. like initially i can come through here very softly wipe out 
The only thing that I wish that these were is I wish they were a um, synthetic blend. I grabbed some blending medium and some white. Very much I do wish that because uh, they can hold a little bit too much water. You think you could do this in watercolor the same way? You could. It would probably go much faster in watercolor. Hmm. Uh, acrylic is sometimes um, a, um, a medium you're building up, building it up slowly. You're building up your layers. You're building up your values. And so you want to... Do that maybe a little slower and then as you go you just build up that depth Mm -hmm. The piece has in the subtle in the subtle work, and I think it's important to realize that every once in a while, stopping and doing uh, black and white value studies in your paint um, can really help you improve your painting skill, even when you're using color. That's a very nice compliment. Hmm. I want us to read this to you. So I love that. Thank you. Danielle says um, she really wanted she didn't want to draw attention to herself, but what, this is a really wonderful comment, and the kind that I know that you like to hear says, "I wanted to thank you, thank the art Sherpa for occupying my mind during the most difficult moments and changing me at the same time." Thank you for sharing that with me. I really appreciate it. That's really you. cool. It is you know. very nice to hear that. You know, I, I am always uh, so appreciate when people share that with me very much. Very, very much. The Cinnamon. kindness is, is always appreciated. Cinnamon and I love doing this. And it's super special when we hear how we've been able to help you guys in the ways that you help us. So, thank you. There's like a half second here that is pretty, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hit that with a bit of gray. Since I know I have to take it down quite a lot and I won't be bringing it back up until I put in the second eye. Because, because the value there is quite deep. And it can be hard to get. Hard to get a little blend out on. And we'll come in with a tiny detail brush and detail that out. You know, as you do. Is the brush stiff or soft? Very soft. So my dome scumblers are really fantastic dry brushers, the cloud brushes, and they do a lot of really amazing... Um, Impasto work, but they are not blenders. Uh. And while they do make a fantastic cloud, I sometimes wonder if I name them correctly because I think when people heard cloud, they immediately went, Oh, it must be soft. And um, the Art Sherpa domes, dome blenders, the cloud brushes are uh, more of a scumble or dry brushing brush. Mm hmm. I'm just trying to create that nice little transition of values through this space. Blending it. Getting it nice and soft. Because we always appreciate a little bit of softness.
is also a good way to practice doing faces. Because you're not also adding um, the struggle of, of trying to figure out your skin tones. at the same time as trying to figure out the value, which can be overwhelming. Now I can come back and clean up some of the harder to work areas. If we know this does kind of value here, And make sure that that's the depth it needs to be mm. deep black. And sometimes these things need to be a deep black. Against the diffusion. So what I'm doing is I'm creating like that def defined chin shape with my hard shadow and then letting the Fusion of the shadow create that more naturalistic look. You can see why, like initially, you see an image like this and you think, "Well, that's that's going to be pretty pretty chill." But mm -hmm. actually, even though this is black and white, there's still a lot of value. Yeah. So this is this is a bit more than just a value study. Mm -hmm. It's why it's on Saturday. It's why it's on Saturday. Takes a little bit more to. It can, can't it? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to try to pay attention to the things that I see in my reference. Hopefully I'll be able to really capture that. And as you can see, these are, these are very, there's a lot of transition here and where you try to capture just a small amount of reflection. Very enjoyable to play with. Mm -hmm. Over here, if you think of this as, um, you think of this in a full range of grayscale, right on this side, you have everything from like five to 10, and from this side, you have everything from, from really, well, they do have some tens, but this is really all in the twos and threes. It's all very light over here. So there's, this is almost a yin and yang, which is another thing that attracted me to this piece, was that it was almost a yin and yang. Mm. The lips will be an interesting challenge because so much of them is lost to the shadow and how to create that look. And in art, sometimes we make some adjustments because we know photographs can help us see things that unless we're doing hyper-realism, painting will not. I'm going to come in with um, a darker gray and then come back with some highlights because I feel like I'll have an easier time, you know, pushing those highlights in. Mm -hmm. And you'll keep coming in and just constantly like, okay, I see a little bit of a line that's going to come there. Mm 
Let me just keep working. I'm going to just touch just the toe of my brush. I'm making short, little, delicate brush strokes. I like to think of like butterfly wings kissing the canvas. Mm -hmm. So on some of these videos, we kind of do more goofing off, more goofing off than we do on other ones. This is true. We tend to do more of the class on Saturday, but you're allowed to goof off. It's true. But someone was asking why don't we don't why we don't do more dancing and things like that on these days. And I was just like, Well, I thought I'd I let you know. answer that. I wonder if we should. Well, I think on some days we do. On some days you get lots of uh dancey dance and bubbles and silliness and I throw some stuff in there just generally, but I also try to pay attention to when you're drilling through some lessons and yeah on, on some of these more complicated ones where people are really you know trying to to jump those skill sets it's i feel like it it's really important really really important to make sure that i'm present to that class part of it mm -hmm. you can see me just valuing through the grays here using my glazing medium valuing through the grays and building up The forgiving nature of what we do with this paint is uh, pretty astonishing sometimes. And finding that little blend. Mm -hmm. Kind of blend, start blending the, the lips into the deep shadow that they're falling into. While still letting them come, come forward. Mm -hmm. All right. That's looking Here's pretty a good. Here's <laughs> Do a little dance. <laughs> now, even though we're doing black and white, I do like to, when the water starts to get murky, change to cleaner water. Um, and that's really just because um, when I want to do a light value, I don't want a bunch of the black pigment to stain uh, what I'm doing. Mm. I may even sometimes go back into my dirty water when I know I'm going to be using a lot of black paint and kind of reserve the second cup for my lighter water. Interesting. Very interesting. I like these black and white studies. This is very relaxing, yo. It is. It's very, I've, I've been I've enjoying been so it. so chill. Except so that chill. I have like this other little pet project waiting for me in the wings over there. I would just sit here all day and do this. This is true. You know what I'm talking about, too. I do. I know what you're talking about. So. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And I say to you, go work on that pit project. Yeah. For the good of all. For the good. Creating a very transitional shadow at the nostril. When you're painting this, if you take the time Ooh, and you slow one. down... <laughs> Don't want to zoom that one in. And you know, and you're and you're painting this, so you're gonna this notice one. a bunch of things about the structure of, of facial features that maybe you hadn't picked up on before. It's good to pick up on. If you had not noticed. I had some maybe noticed. You thought you thought some thoughts? I thought some thoughts. I just kept them in my head. You know what? Someone said that we need to put some bubbles on. I'm not sure why. But you know, I'm always up for some You do some you do some virtual bubbles and I'll blow to the side. <sighs> virtual bubbles. No, it just bubbles. wants to get on my canvas. I can't. You can't. We'll just do undersea bubbles. And then what I will also do is somewhere I have, where did it go? There it is. I wish I had fresh coffee. Can you microwave my I coffee? I can microwave your coffee. Watch this. You It'll can go. give me a question and I can sit in the ocean and uh, we can say thank you. Thank you so much for the support of the show. Thank you for all the ways you guys support the show. Thank you for coming to the events. Thank you for painting and tagging me online. 
and letting me know what you did. Thank you for, you know, for everyone who's doing the patronage. Thank you so much for that. That really, really helps. Just there's a lot of ways to support us and I appreciate all of it. Let's see here. I can get you some coffee and we can do something. We I think don't... I just need a microwave because I'm in the AC. Oh, you want to give me chat? Okay, chat. It's okay. I'll take Is, chat. Can you I see think that? I can read from here. Okay. Uh, how's John getting on with watercolor paints? Brilliantly. Brilliantly. In, okay. in Jackson, yeah. Um, my, oh, hi, Lindsay Herbert. What is your question? And then I have Dana Fuqua. Sherpa, can you paint a sloth? Now, Dana, I did paint a watercolor one, and it is on Facebook and on the website. So if you go to the website and you search the word sloth, I did a slothy. Um, I am probably going to do a sloth coming up. I found a reference that I really like where the sloth is hanging upside down and it is and fur is blowing in the wind, and I just think to myself, he needs a flower crown and everything would be perfect. Uh, Joanne asked, can you use a deer foot like you use the blender? Um, depends on the quality of the deer foot stippler. They are, they're pretty good. They are not as good, but if what you have on you right now is a deer foot, cause you just had already gotten a deer foot, you could totally make that work here. You may eventually want to in, uh, invest in the dome just, just for the, the way that the brush is really, so Hey, you took my chat away softening and everything um but yeah you could use a deer foot slipper and i'm Lindsay. i didn't see your question i took things back over here so i could see what I'm was going put on put up some more black paint are you mm -hmm. now you'll notice do it if doing black and white paintings is cost effective um one because the pigment is not expensive mm -hmm. right so you've got very inexpensive pigment and you don't have to use that much to get a lot done. So if you're trying to learn how to paint and you're on a budget, practicing your paintings in black and white is actually a, a really good, good way of doing that. Neat. Right into my number four round. Actually, I think I need some more sips of coffee. Do we have a question when I'm sipping my coffee? I need coffee. Let's see here. I'll go down here. Oh, wow. Is there a Claire brush just sent. Out of my head? Do you have do you have what? The brush sticking out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm fine. <laughs> what are we doing? Okay. So uh, Claire, she just sent some some bubble love. <laughs> thank, thank you, Claire. And she says, thank you, Cinnamon and John. My painting has improved tremendously with your instruction. My attitude is improved with your positive, positive energy. Thank you. Thank you Ooh, very thank much. You. Isn't it amazing how... Being creative just like, you know, your creativity absolutely improves the more you use. But I find that as I'm creative, I am able to, uh, uh, I don't know, stay ratcheted in my emotional space a little bit better. It helps me work through a lot of things that I, I might otherwise work through in less healthy fashion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd still be creative about it. You better believe it. But it might not be a healthy expression, that creativity. <laughs> I mean, because think about it, Dexter was creative, right? was a very creative person. <laughs> just kidding. Watch the show. No Dexter rage texts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> so isn't she looking nice? She's looking really good. I really, really good. like this part here that's coming in very subtly, mm -hmm. and I do like the transition shadow that's there. Those can be really hard to get. They're really challenging for people to get in skin tones. And so I, I do think it's nice to come back and work on this in black and white and figure out how to get that soft effect in your acrylic. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So which brush are you using there? I'm using a number four round. Number four round. And you're just... I'm coming in and I'm going to deepen the shadow on the lips. I have to say that uh, turntable painting is like my fave. Makes it easy for you. Y'all to... just have no idea how much easier it makes for me. Because a lot of times at the easel, I'm painting at an angle that is not really the angle I would always pick first for the project. Mm -hmm. And with the turntable... I can always get into what I'm doing. 
effectively. Trying to get a shade darker than my black is black, but so that there's just some minor little stepping there. Maybe we can talk about some of the fine lines or wonderful lip lines that happen. They're always sort of entertaining to do. The delicate little lines of lip. And I'm just on the toe of the brush. This is dark, but it's not the darkest of the dark. It's on stuff like this, a good white is super helpful. You want a really good white. Really good. So that it covers even your gray transitions and doesn't do any bleed. Because you don't want any bleed through. The squeakiest door in the world. Everyone told you to WD-40 it. I'm going to keep making sure that I've got a nice little transition space. Continuing a bit of that. Gray, it's still gray, but that gray kind of makes the lip feel like it's continued. When I want to um, create the lines in the lighter part of the lip, I've got to make sure that the brush is into a very light gray, but that it's um, flowing. So I add a little bit of water, I can work the toe. You're so squeaky. Psst. That's hmm. my mic going. Psst. What are you doing? Nothing. I can't, my mic. I can't hear the whispers. My mic does it. It makes this psst sound. Oh. Whenever I. Like, I don't know what you're saying. It's like a a spaceman's microphone when you turn it on and off. You're going to have to careless whisper less, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to what? Careless whisper less. <laughs> careless whisper? Less. Mm. Less of the careless whisper. Mm, okay. It's important that we... Hmm. That's an interesting question. Hmm. Ala was asking, is it okay to paint with acrylics that are intended for multi-surfaces? It does say for canvas as use as well, so. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it, as long as it's not a paint that won't stick to your surface, it's okay to paint with. Acrylics are pretty cool stuff. It's basically plastic that has binder suspended in it that you can smear on stuff. Kind of is exactly what it is. The vehicle is a modern... Oh, look at you using them stuff. art terms. Pretty <laughs> cool. You learn stuff. He does. He picks up real quick. When he does get into his learning, he picks up on stuff real quick. I'm going to continue to blend up. And the curve of my brush stroke here will help inform the shape of the lip. How do we like the subject matter? Do we like painting the black and white girl face? Mm -hmm. Well, I enjoy watching you paint it as much as I do any other subject matter. This has been kind of... Um, Interesting to see come in. Yeah. 
Because the, I like the roundness of it. The round table. No, oh, that's too wet. A little hiccup so what you saw there is that this is what I don't like about these brushes is they hold too much moisture. Um, and so when you go to do a blend like this, they lift rather than blend. Huh. Which is irksome. And then I got to come back in and fix it. Have you ever used an airbrush? Do, have I ever used an airbrush? Yeah. Yes. What do you think of it? I think they are a tremendous tool. Um, they really picked up when I was uh, a young girl when they kind of came into full medium. Mm -hmm. And I remember they got a lot of flack mm -hmm. in the art community and I always thought that was sort of silly. A Bruce Eagle. Back with some white blending in. I, I find them to be um, a wonderful art medium. If you're a fan of airbrush artists, there's a gentleman by the name of Bruce Eagle. Oh, yes, very he much. is tremendously talented, ha has done a ton, a ton, a ton of movie posters that you have seen in Airbrush. That's how he got a lot of his gig. You know, he's an amazingly talented artist, but to pay the bills, he worked for a lot of movie companies and did movie posters and cool stuff. There we go. See how that brush kind of helps us soften that, though? Mm -hmm. Neat, isn't it? Yeah, we awesome. So it's a good tool to have around. And yeah, I, I highly respect airbrush artists. And I think an airbrush, if you're painting all the time, if you're painting full time and you find that you're doing a lot, to say you want to do a lot of blended effects in skies, and you've seen me do blended effects in skies, but you got to admit, a bit of work doing it the brush way. It is almost no work doing it the airbrush way other than the initial learning period of understanding your tool. Once you understand your tool, it makes skies nice and... Yeah. Yeah. And you can do really amazing undersea effects. You know, if you look at stuff like Wyland or uh, Lawson, you know, the airbrush comes into that. Uh, very important. It gives you such diffusion and such blending. In fact, I think it rivals and exceeds oils in those techniques sometimes. Um, it dries very quickly. And as long as you avoid toxic pigments... It's an amazing tool to have in, and you can get into a good airbrush for right around $100. And um, the, your favorite paint companies make inks and liquid products uh, for your airbrush. We've demonstrated airbrush medium as, as, an, as an alternate to water you know, here on the show. So we, it's a pretty cool thing. One of my favorite forms of art to this day that I still buy every time I go out and see it is when I see a really talented street painter who can use spray paint and make um, especially like super spacey um, scenes, you know, where you've got like a you know, ringed planet with some sort of cool city off in the distance. You know, they do all sorts of magical stuff. I okay. have to agree. So. I also have to say to all the fabulous street artists out there, really read that can of paint before you keep setting fire to it. I know. they. I, I, I make that comment every time, and they're like, yes, don't do what I do. I'm a it, skilled here's person. Here's what's really sweet, because I, I get that they are in this, you know, you've got to do what makes you money, right? That's, that's certainly part of the gig, and you've got to do what makes you money and what gets attention and gets people to you. And if you're the airbrush guy who's not using fire in your work, right, you don't pull the crowd. However, the VOCs they are released are really scary. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I sometimes wonder, you know. Um, there is a safer way, and there's a way of doing all those things in the proper way. But, you know, that's for those artists to explore. And we're just sort of like, I'm saying I enjoy it. Oh, I love it. I'm just like, if you're an airbrush, if you're a street artist and you're hearing this, Please, 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 please look up the safety information on the fire. But I get how, I don't know what they you would know, do instead. It actually, social distancing may help them. See, now they don't have to tell everybody to back up six feet. They're just going to automatically do it. So they don't have well, to I'm worry about, about it. I'm worried about the artist, not the vendors. <laughs> I'm going to use this blender the, to kind you, of well, blend this gray the, area here. With a new mask paradigm, you should be wearing a mask anyway. Me? Just the generally, if you're doing crazy stuff with VOCs and working. You could do it. Here's what I would do. If I were a street artist, here's what I would do. I would get one of the nosh things and I would steampunk that thing out. And I would like do a cyberpunk kind of headpiece. 
and make it part of my show. Mm -hmm. And those mugs down the street, they would not get any of my attention because I would have my cool wet gear on and pe people are going to come for the show, right? So that's, that's right. what I would do. Uh, if you do that, if you hear this and then you do that, please send me a picture. Yep, please. We will see it. And also know this, any artists coming in here, uh, I respect digital artists. I respect airbrush artists. I respect street artists. I respect graffiti artists. I respect artists. There isn't a medium that you work in where I'm going to look at you and go, that's not art. Mm -hmm. Ever. Not here. Even though I tend to teach a traditional medium uh, in acrylic, yeah. you're never, ever going to get disrespected for the medium that you use here. And in fact, I will probably even uh, stand up for you. Yeah. I think that's crazy. We are just creating these wonderful, soft, little under eye kind of shadows that she has going here. I think I need a little more up closer to the eye, and then I need to pull it back out. Sometimes when I have to, what I'll do is I'll come back with uh, white on the counter end and then um, blend back the opposite way to improve what's happening. And I wish this was my every weekend. I really enjoy doing this. I actually really enjoy working black and white. I like it too. Mm -hmm. Just... It's peaceful and it's therapeutic for me and it's mentally calm because I'm not having to work through a bunch of color theory. I'm just like tightening up my value scales. That's why I've been really enjoying working digitally lately. Mm -hmm. I'm loving her, son. I love it. I think it's looking really good. I'm going to come back down into the lip again. I'm going to just make sure that I have some of these little lines that are the lip lines. Because I think that they improve what the... How does everyone think I'm doing? If you think this is good, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit subscribe because two times a week we live stream classes mm -hmm. one for never before paintings like if you've never painted before we do a really easy project friday night and then if you are still like looking for tutorials we add to those art skills on saturday so definitely hit the sub button definitely hit like if you enjoy how this is coming out and you'd like to see more like this definitely do that and also there are tip videos that come out just could just be released epic tip videos like we did a whole hour uh exposition on fan brushes mm -hmm. definitely definitely i forget to uh, i'm just doing that because i keep forgetting to like be like and follow like and subscribe I just forget that a lot let's see what i'm doing here A lot of times the trick is, is I'm just trying to look at the reference and get a sense of where the reference is taking me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, really try to be in that. And sometimes it's interesting to see where the reference takes you. You don't know. It's probably the least expensive painting day I've had in a while. <laughs> That's very nice. I like how the eyes are coming together. I very much like that. It's, it's been pretty good. I'm still looking over deciding if I want to do like the faint eyebrow on the other side or not. Mm -hmm. It's one of those weird places where it could go well, might not go well.
always interesting to see how we can. Gotta love that tool, right? Mm hmm. Soft, 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 soft. Uh, if you go out and get one at Michael's and you leave a review, say the art chirp is sent me. Yeah. On your reviews. Unless you're going to say something mean and then you don't know me. <laughs> This is an interesting place on the painting because it's got um, just the slightest tone and value right here. Mm. Comes to about halfway back on the eye. Nope. Just playing with it. And to the degree that you can, you definitely want to see what you're doing as playing. It will help you enjoy your process more. So this is an interesting question. I have an interesting answer, I think. What what does it mean when someone says you've got a little room for improvement? <laughs> means that there's not. Um, probably what it means is uh, like if someone's it, like God, not I in just a bad don't way. ever say that so, to other artists. I'm trying to get into the headspace where I would say that, but mean well. And, and a teacher, right? So as as a teacher is trying to tell Te you, a hey, teacher you've got a little might room say for that and mean well because what they're trying to say to you is is that you're doing. If, if a teacher says it means well. What they're saying is, you're great where you are, but you have room to grow. I'm going to tell you a trick. Everybody has room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Even the greatest of artists have room for improvement because as artists, we never stop improving. We never stop growing. This is a not ending journey. You are always refining. You're always... Picasso, I mean, as an example, was exploring and pushing the boundaries of what he did until he died, right? Mm -hmm. Monet was. I mean, there just isn't an artist who, if you're alive and you're painting, your next painting, you know, you're putting everything that you've ever had before into it and then pushing yourself to the next level. So we all have a little room for improvement. I, as a teacher, it's a tough thing because I, I wasn't there in that moment. And mm -hmm. it's not something I, I generally say uh, to my own students. Um, just because it's so easy to internalize that you you don't hear like oh I'm great where I am, but I've got a, I've got room to grow. Right. You just sort of hear like I'm not enough yet. There's this weird metric of enough that's improved. I don't know mm -hmm. whatever it is, and I'm not there yet is what I think most students kind of tend to hear in that moment, which is why I don't say. It. I'm sorry. So they were not. They're probably a very nice person. Uh, it's not something I would say. You can feel like that, though, can't it? It's just not something I would ever say to one of my own students. Yeah. Just wouldn't do it. I just, I just wouldn't go there. I don't think it would be helpful. I uh, don't think it would have a, it would be relevant to what they were going through. Mm-hmm. But hey, we all have room for improvement. That's I true. have room for improvement. I mean, how boring would all this be if there was no room for improvement? Mm -hmm. So boring, right? So 
I guess we'll try to see that as a very good thing. Yeah. This is going to be great. We're going to do the eyebrow. Now, the thing is, is that we're going to kind of create a gray base for it and then pull some darker values on it. You see, I come through with some fairly, I guess, confident strokes is how I would word that. Getting that line in and then trying to decide, you know, how I want to express that line. Mm -hmm. I might have got a little excited up there. My Brooke Shields on. <laughs> <laughs> Getting my brook shields on. And I am going to come through and sort of make sure that the, I don't really want that much of the white of the surface to show through. I'm going to come over here and see if I can somehow pull off. Get in the angle where I can see it. Just a little bit of the highlights could be the other. The other brow. This is this is I would say probably the more the most challenging part of the whole piece for me is this little bit right here, mm. because I need to sit there. I want to say that they're there. There we go. Little hint of eyebrow. Challenging as that was. While I'm here. Adding a bit of shadow to that. See how we're just continuing to refine that deep reflection in there? Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a little bit challenging to do. It's turning out really nice. It'll be big when the blue goes in on the eye. And that's a lovely piece. I think this was definitely worth doing. Yeah. Um, I like dipping into these uh, black and white, more realistic pieces. I'm going to get some water into here to thin it. I'm on the toe of my brush. And I just try to, now it does help that, as has been pointed out to me by, by some less than generous people, I have pink eyebrows. Do you? Um, I have very light eyebrows. Um, and so I've had to draw them in my whole life. So this may help a bit. <laughs> it may make it a little bit easier, but that's what I'm doing is I'm just doing these kind of like, I follow the brow line and I try to get the individual hairs sort of worked in and now we're going to start putting in some of the big blacks on the eye. Big values. Just 
just making sure that what I've got there is mm -hmm. not going to make her seem cross-eyed. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with being cross-eyed. No. I'm just trying to paint a different thing than that. Different thing than that entirely. Trying to paint what I see. It's coming together really nicely. She does. I'm going to come into here. And I will be, it's not really a stipple, but it's a small, these are small, erratic, tiny, furtive little strokes on the toe of the brush. Now look, I'm getting away with a lot with this round. This is an art Sherpa round. It's made by Silver Brush Limited. It has the Sherpa white filament in it, and it's got a point on it like it's nobody's business. And I take care of my brushes, so my brushes keep their points and keep their shape. Um, number one thing you can do to save money is thoroughly wash your brushes of paint after every session. Lay them down flat to dry. Reshape the shape of them with your fingers and lay them down flat to dry. If it's really, really bad, you can always cornstarch them and let that dry and help that keep them into shape. But you've really, really got to take care of them if you want them to stay the sharp little wonderful. Brushes that they are. Mm -hmm. Really coming nice. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. Everyone's being so social out there, saying mm -hmm. hello and greeting everyone. There's just lots of folks coming in saying hello, chatting oh, with so each other. I'm so happy to see everybody today. It's been pretty nice. I cannot wait to see your guys' version of this. And again, these are on Amazon. They're super inexpensive. They're just particle board. You can get gorgeous versions of these. Mm -hmm. You can get beautiful canvas versions. But this this is not like a super pricey version. And uh, if Mod Cad Red remembers where she got them, she can share that with you guys. We're continuing to shade that eyeball. And this should help you also be kind of aware of, oh, like, oh, there's what kind of shading that you would have any other time mm -hmm. that you would be painting. Add a little reflection in there. Add a little bit of extra white there because there's a light, there's a very light space. Right there. Mm Another thing that I can do is I can flatten out my brush like this mm -hmm. and come feather blend it like that. Oh, yeah. Where that type of blending is needed. I still want to come back with my... But I, it gives me that nice you know, beginning to all this. Mm. And continue to darken the back corner of the eye. Mm 
you can see that that definitely creates some real shape and definition there. Mm -hmm. The degree that I'm able, I want to make both pupils kind of the same. Now, I have a couple things that are helpful and very forgiving. One is that there is a shadow that comes across the eye like that. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. Like right now already, I like. Mm -hmm. I like it too. Let's put out our blue. Eh, actually, I'm going to do the blue after I get the lashes in. Now, where did you find your turntable at? Okay. So this fabulous, wonderful turntable, and it, go back to the beginning to see how decorative it is. It's gorgeous. It's Pioneer Woman, and it was from Walmart, and I love it. Mm. Love, love, love it. Now I'm going to come along the top of the lid. And make sure that there's sort of a blended soft uh, liner there. Having my brush up and down to make sure that the line is not a crisp one. Gonna get my black on the toe of my brush. Mm -hmm. Curve out some little eyelashes. Now those go. Yeah. I press the hardest at the beginning of the stroke and I do a really big release. The other thing that I do is as I come forward in the eye, I change the direction and the curve. I have short little lashes and longer, strong ones that you can really see. And this is hard. This takes some practice. So, you know, being aware of how these are done. I also allow my lashes to crisscross over each other. Mm -hmm. If you're in life book, uh, I did a whole class on uh, how to do that. I do like one for you too. What's life book? Life book is a year long painting course. Uh, there's 38 teachers. It is created by Tamara Laporte. And, um, it's just about a spiritual and physical art journey, really. Hmm. About uh, not only picking up these, it's very focused for journaling and, you know, art journaling kind of thought processes. And, but it, gosh, there's yoga, there's nonviolent communication, there's just everything for well being. Tamara's very committed to that in her personal process. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put out some blue here. Oh no, this is Prussian blue. That is a completely different blue than what we have. Not the blue you were looking for? This is not the blue I was looking for. 
I, so I could use it. Could, nobody cares. I don't think anybody will mind. It's just a deeper blue. Give it out there so we can see it a little. You can see it's just a it's just a deeper, deeper blue. Because it's here and it's out and we've already mm -hmm. like unloaded it. <laughs> Initially I was gonna use that little. But I think this will work. Yeah. That's looking great. Mm -hmm. That looks fantastic. I think it's I think it'll be just fine. And a little white to the blue to create a little highlight here over here on the far eye. So you know how I'm all the time you guys like, oh yeah, you can totally use a different different color. Mm -hmm. Here you see me doing it. It just changes like I would say what's changed here is that some of the it's just a deeper blue. It's just Russian instead of Thalo. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt the piece. Doesn't harm you in any way. Wow, those eyes just really pop out. Yeah, they just come out, don't they? It really does. And then they're like, I'm, I'm the eye that pops out. I'm the eye. Every once in a while, you got to keep adjusting those little values. I'm going to zoom in the eyes there for you. Just so they can see a little closer what you're doing. You're not going to be able to see the palette. Maybe. We just keep putting it in. We put a little light into the color of the eye. Mm -hmm. So there's this curved lens that goes over the eye, and then the colorant is underneath it. And what that will do is allow you to see um, this beautiful sort of almost marble-like reflection. And just trying to find that nice. Mm -hmm. Come into my white here. A little bit back. Now, a nice touch can be coming in with your pure black. And if you have the room to make some little shadows of the lashes across the eye, that can add to the realism of the eye. Because the lid, the lashes as they come forward will cast down directly across on the uh, ocular ball and give you that effect. 
Now I'm going to come in and just take some white. I'm right here. Oh, wow. And then I'm going to come across to the other eye. Let me see here. Over there. I'll get the other one. It's way nice. There you go. This one, ugh, so important. Must balance the eyes. All right. A little more than I wanted, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt it too much. And put pure white on that little gray. Mm -hmm. And I think we're ready to sign it. Let's look at it. Wow. That's really amazing. Painting on a round canvas, black and white painting, and a pop of color. Very inexpensive way to do art. That turned out amazing. Right? This, like, these are, I think these are, they came out to like a, I'm going to guess like a, like a dollar a piece, maybe. That, it may be less even on the canvases and I think I probably have just a couple bucks in paint. So it's quite a lot of project, right? Ian or, asked a good uh, question. not a lot of money. Ian asked a really good question here. I have a really good answer for Ian. With all the black and white, how do you stop the eyes from popping out so far and being too prominent? I would say just pay attention to your values. Mm -hmm. If you feel the eyes are coming at you too much or they're taking over, like, you know, on a piece like this, I would personally want the eyes to just, like, be following you all throughout the room. But if you do look at your piece and you're like, man, I feel like these eyes are just too much for me, you could always, like, gray them back with the glaze and start again. You could desaturate them with their contrast, right? If you're like, that is too much, just... You know, just gray back with either the black and, you know, a gray paint. You can just tone it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to come in and be like, oh, neither do you use the contrast. Or you could just, you know, I could have pulled out an orange to contrast the blue to create a gray. So, knock them back, as artists like to say. I am taking a, this is an ultra round from, I just don't know where my monogram liner is. So, this is the brush today we're signing with. It seems good. It seems okay. I like that question. Good question. Yeah. And I think it's fun to play with this idea where everything is black and white. Just one focal bit, the part that you're trying to tell a story of, it's in color. Out of today's result. Wow. That turned out fantastic. I'm very happy with it. I hope you guys are happy with yours. Mm -hmm. That would be the thing. Do we have undersea bubbles? We do have undersea bubbles. We can go... Undersea bubble. <sighs> so and good. I go up here and I can go. I can fade that one out. And then let's see if we can go. Do we have any questions before we go? Ooh. Let's see. <gasps> You're in the middle of the sea. We have all sorts of sea footage where you could be in. You can see it's underwater. Okay, so we had some questions up here. Let me go back and see. Everyone thought this was amazing. Are you going to do some more round ones? Would you like to? I think th I think folks would like to do some more rounds. That spinny thing was very popular. I really enjoy it. It it makes landscape painting so much nicer. Yeah, <laughs> it makes all the painting so much nicer. Honestly, it's like the the issue again is framing, right? But mm -hmm. once you solve the framing issue, then it's like certainly much more pleasant. And you can put a square canvas on here and just use the turntable. It's a really nice way of painting. Yeah, pioneer woman. Turntable. Hmm. I get a lot. Well, now it's going to be sold out everywhere. <laughs> this everyone's just saying so much thank you, so so many thank yous. They like the uh, the the jellyfish. They like the jellyfish. I like the jellyfish too. The jellyfish are fun. The jellyfish call me, and they're good. I like this new way of doing bubbles. I I love our bubbles. I really do. And whenever we're at the easel, but uh, on on this surface and in this paint, it was like them landing all over the canvas was an issue. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So I think I like our, our rocket in our virtual bubbles kind of. That's kind of a fun thing. We'll have to work on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. We definitely can do a round canvas. Um, this Wednesday on Facebook, uh, we've got a watercolor coming up. So if you want to come by and join that live, that's going to be Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're doing a little moon and another landscape. And then uh, Friday, uh, it's going to be a very easy um, uh, musical themed one. And then mm. Saturday, we're doing a big canvas. We're doing a 20 by 20 square. And it's going to be a beautiful wicker chair and hat and lots and lots and lots of purple flowers. We're doing this because I painted a room purple and I needed a painting. Yeah. So yay for you. On occasion, I like almost always paint entirely for you guys, but this particular one I'm doing because I need it for my room. Hmm. Um, hmm? Is it? Ah. Uh -huh. And I think we have this Saturday, I think we do have a um, group live oh, for cool. the Facebook so you might want to come by for that. There should we'll be check some that interesting out. stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Show me yours. I would love to see your version of this painting. Share, share it with me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. I don't mind. Wherever you share your artwork with your friends, tag me in. Let me know. I do care very much to see your paintings. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.